Hey guys, Nova here. So, this is kind of a little bit of a follow-up to my last video, especially since this is something that kinda, it relates to the burnout that I was experiencing that I mentioned in that last video. You will hear a little bit of like, page turny kinda sounds because I, you know, I like to, I'm trying to get the hang of scripting, I'm trying to get better at scripting. And it, most of my scripting is notes, so you're gonna hear paper sounds as I go through my notes, okay? So, for a while I didn't want to do anything, not even draw at all, and I felt bad about it. And that's kind of what led to this video, like I said, it relates to the last one. And the fact that I didn't, I didn't want to draw despite the fact that I love drawing. And not wanting to made me feel bad about it. But one thing I want to say is first I do want to clarify that this particular particular video is in regard to I don't want to draw or create because I'm starting to approach burnout or because you know I'm having issues things like that things are bad it's not relating to the kind of I don't want to draw because mm, I don't really wanna those are different those are very different and I want to create the distinction right here you know, it is, it's okay to not be in the mood, so long as you get done, you know, like, what you need to do. And I hope I don't say you know too much. I used to say it like crazy constantly, and it's creeping back in. Like, to an incessant degree. But, as I said, you want to, you want to make sure that you still get done what you need to do, and what you need to get done. That's important, but also being in the mood to just not create, there's not really anything wrong with that. Now sometimes if you're not if you're not experiencing like burnout or a thing where you need to take a break and step back and it's stuff that you need to do or you need to get done, look sometimes you just gotta suck it up and do stuff you don't want to do. That's part of being an adult. It sucks, but it's what you gotta do. It's part of it. You know, second I want to say that, second, I want to say this is something I'm still learning to handle myself. Even when I burn out and miserable, I tend to feel guilty for not constantly working on things. And it, it's bad, it's to a point where I feel like I'm lazy, like I'm not worth things, and not worthy of anything positive, and even sometimes struggling with damaging thoughts and, and ideations just because I feel lazy because I'm not constantly working on my art stuff. Even when I've been working on my art stuff, I feel guilty for not working harder. I feel guilty when I shouldn't. And this is on top of the fact that I work a full-time job, like a full-time quote-unquote normal job. It's not, and sometimes you have to just chill. Sometimes you need to decompress. And learning to handle the fact that sometimes we just need to do that is hard. Really hard. But sometimes you have to step away. Accepting that is difficult. Actually trying to back away and take a break is hard. And I've noticed something. I've noticed it's common, especially in creatives, to feel guilty or like completely like a failure just because you need a break. Needing a break doesn't make you a failure. It doesn't make you less of an artist either. Are there people who will tell you that it does? Yes, but they're jerks, so they can heck off. People sometimes won't get it, and sometimes, honestly, other artists will tell you that kind of stuff. Will tell you that, well, you don't really want it then. Will tell you that because you're not working yourself to the point of burnout and beyond, just because you're not doing that, you don't want it bad enough. You don't really want to be an artist. You're not a real artist. That's what these people say. It's not a good thing. It's not the kinds of things you should listen to, but it is rampant. It is rampant. And I've noticed that. You see it all the time. I've seen it in the midst of art drama, and it's stupid and annoying, and I hate it. But honestly, so long as you're not using it as an excuse, which is completely different, you're not doing something wrong by stepping away. It's okay, even as an artist, to not want to create. I get it. It's harder to do that if you work in a creative field. I do get that. I'm trying, with a lot of difficulty, 
to build a creative career, you know, while having a quote-unquote normal job at the same time. It's hard. It's not easy. I can't give concrete advice. Honestly, I really don't think anybody can give concrete advice, like for sure advice. But I will suggest to try and step away when you can. It's hard to find time. But please do, even if it's something small. Pushing too hard through misery could lead to burnout. And I said it in my last video. Burnout is hell. It is. It's, it's hellish. It's awful. It makes you feel bad. It makes you feel like an awful person. And especially if you deal with it on top of, on top of depression, something like depression or anything like that. Oh gosh, that immediately skyrockets it and makes it worse in an instant. It makes it worse. Despite what some people may think, artists are not creativity machines. We're not. We're people. We're just still humans. Our brains can run out of juice. We need time to refresh our minds. The creative well is not limitless. No matter how much of an artist you are, sometimes you need to give your brain a break. And as much as some people like to act like they don't need to, it's really obvious to tell when someone does and they're just not. It's really obvious. Sorry, not sorry, it is. And the little things, the teeny tiny little things, to step away and give your mind a rest and give yourself a chance to recuperate in that way, the little things can add up to a big difference over time. A few little ways to unwind can go a long way to making you feel better. And honestly, here are a few things that I work uh, that I feel like work for me. I feel like, you know, this video does nothing if I don't at least give examples of some sort to kind of get my point across. Especially because I understand not everybody processes things the same way. You know, I, I definitely understand that one because I don't. So here are just a few things that work for me. Number one, taking a walk outside. This is especially true for the people it works for. This is especially true if you spend a lot of time inside. Sometimes a walk to get some fresh air and a change of scenery can make you feel better. If you like to take a drive, sometimes that one can have similar effects. Bonus points, of course, for playing your favorite music and giving yourself a serotonin boost that way. Sometimes we just need a mindless, mindless walk where you let your mind wander and enjoy everything around you. Or a nice drive down a not-so-busy road with your favorite music making you feel better while you go. Number two, play a game. Look, games can help me a lot. It lets me indulge in interacting with a different world than whatever I'm working on for my art, and sometimes it's just nice to interact with something that's not this world, because I'm not going to talk much on that, but this world is awful and it, it makes me really frustrated. This world is awful and it makes me really frustrated. I lost my place and my train of thought. It just left the station without me on board and I don't think it's coming back. Ah, right, games. So, a little bit of a bonus, at least to me, if we're playing games, at least for the ones I, I tend to play a lot, you've got story-driven games, especially fantasy and sci-fi. Mass Effect and Dragon Age are awesome games. I recommend those. My sister loves Fable. You know, but things like that can give you inspiration. It can, at least for me it does. It may not for everybody, but it does for me. And even aside from those, I can encourage you to just Play games that make you relax and feel happy. Some of my favorites have got to be Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing and Pokemon. And by the way, if you have any recommendations for games, let me know. I like all kinds of different games and I'm always looking for new ones to check out. Another great game series, uh, Fire Emblem. I actually really liked Engage, I'm not gonna lie, I really did. I liked the characters a lot in it. Ah, getting sidetracked again. Number three. I just held up the wrong number of fingers. The good thing I'm not on video. Number three. Read a book. Physical books, ebooks, audiobooks. It does not matter. Sci fi, romance, dystopian, fantasy, whatever genre you prefer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's well written or if it's a guilty pleasure thing you know, that somebody just, that someone else could look at and just turn their nose up at because they're a snooty book snob and 
doesn't care if other people are enjoying things and gets mad at other people for enjoying things because that thing's not good enough. I see that a lot. But even if it's something like that, if it's fanfic even, if it makes you happy, read it. Sometimes you just need to let yourself indulge in things. Sometimes those things you indulge in are nice and, and fun and they give your brain the break it needs. Side note, again, any recommendations for fantasy, sci-fi, or anything like that, let me know. Again, always looking for new things to read, or I use audiobooks a lot, so listen to. So, number four. Watch something. A drama, cartoon, whatever. It's like with games or books. I've, I've already said this about both of these. If it makes you happy, if it gives you that serotonin and makes you feel a little better, do it. If it doesn't matter. Uh, shoot, there are times if I'm over with my, my sister and my nephew, sometimes we watch Bluey because that is a cute little cartoon and it's adorable and I wish they had had it around when I was a kid because it's a good one. I like it. But it's a good one. But it doesn't matter. If you like something and you like to watch it, watch it. For me, sometimes it's horror movies. Like, spooky movies are my favorite. Sometimes it's spooky that... Uh, or not spooky, but... <laughs> thriller, gory movies that go a little bit a little bit cheesy and ridiculous the further the series goes on. Looking at you, Saw, but you're still one of my favorites. I love you. Um, if you enjoy it, do it. And number five, my last suggestion on this list is to just do something that lets you turn off your brain. Look, sometimes we just need to let our minds relax. A mindless game, a relaxing bath, a nap, just anything that lets your mind disengage. Sometimes you need to. Sometimes we just need to let our brains go into static mode for a bit. And that can be hard. Depending on... Depending on your brain, it might just be the closest equivalent to static mode. And I might be speaking from experience on that one. Sometimes you just have to. That static mode or something close to it is important to just let your brain wander and just go. It's... It works. Sometimes. But the best overall advice I can really give is try to follow what draws you and makes you happy. Honestly, I gotta be upfront, but the same solutions won't work for everyone. It won't. Everybody's different. Everybody is, and different things are going to work for different people. Different combinations of things for people who multitask are gonna work for different people. But you have to find your solution. It's important to experiment and to find your answer to burnout and creative fatigue. And unfortunately, stepping away won't work for everyone. And that's why experimenting is so important. And look, I just want to end off by saying that the most urgent thing of all of this is taking care of you. Your mental and physical health are a priority. In short, you're important and you matter. Do what's right for you when you can. Leave your own suggestions in the comments to help out other people. Maybe send this to someone who might benefit from hearing it. Whatever works, just take care of yourselves. See you guys next time. Bye!